Hey everybody, welcome back to Wow Mom Cooking. Today we're gonna to be making buttermilk chicken and buttermilk fried chicken and garlic mashed potatoes. So grab your aprons, grab your pens, and let's get cooking with Wow. going to start with our buttermilk chicken. I know it looks like I've already done a lot, but I really haven't. This chicken needs to soak overnight for the best flavor. So here's what you do. I already did this. You take two cups of buttermilk, one cup of heavy whipping cream. It's a little different than most people do. I've got about two tablespoons of crushed garlic in here, a tablespoon of crushed black pepper, and I also put a tablespoon of uh, dried onion in here. I know it's a little different, but I like the way that the dried onion soaks up all that buttermilk flavor and then adds everything together. So we put that in a Ziploc bag, gallon size Ziploc bag, soak it overnight. You need at least an hour if you can't do it overnight. So soak it overnight and then when you are uh, ready to cook, you take it out of the refrigerator and set it aside in a bowl and you're going to be ready to go. The second thing we need to do is take our flour mixture and add some flavor to it. This is it. This is what it should look like. We have right here two cups of flour. We have about a quarter cup of cornmeal. Now this is very finely ground cornmeal because we don't want to have any kind of really hard, hard crunch when we do this in the deep fry. We want it to be extra flavor and extra texture. Into this we've also put about two tablespoons of black pepper. We also have in here some granulated garlic, about a tablespoon of that. Then I also have some of that garlic I've told you about. It is right here. This is our dried garlic, sliced garlic. It's really delicious, has a little bit different flavor than that granulated garlic. I've got a couple tablespoons of that in there too. So that's all in here, it's all mixed together. And then what I did is I ran it through the sifter just one time, and that was really just to make it incorporate together and taste better. So we've got this all ready. What we're gonna do next is we're going to shake off our chicken, make sure it's not too wet. We're gonna dredge it in this flour, and then it's gonna go onto a rack to uh, have it kind of soak up the, the coating a little bit and get ready to go into the fryer. So I'm going to put some of this onto our plate. I don't want to use it all because I can always save some if I don't use it all. Let's get this garlic over to the side. All right. Don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. You can always wash them afterwards. So we've got our chicken here. And I've also got a baker's rack. It's a cooling rack, but it's perfect for this. So what we're gonna do is start out with our chicken. Put just a couple pieces in here. So we wanna make sure it gets good and coated. Okay, this is what it should look like when you're ready to take it out of this coating. Okay, we're gonna set it over on the baker's rack. We're gonna do this to all of our pieces. Only takes a minute. Roll it around, have some fun with it. Okay, we're gonna set this one over here. Now I know we're gonna run out of our flour mixture here, but that's okay. That's where we're adding just a little bit at a time so that we can reuse it if we need to. Or if you decide this isn't enough chicken, you have somebody else show up, you can always do a couple more pieces. Now this is our big one, this is our chicken breast. We did take this whole off of the chicken with the ribs and bones attached. I always think that makes it taste better. And it also has all the skin on it. Okay, we're gonna set one more piece down and then we're gonna add some more of that flour mixture. All right. That looks good. It also smells really good already. Okay, we've got two more pieces to do. Our thighs. These are the ones we're gonna wanna cook first. They take the longest, the dark meat does, and it just uh, it seems to work out better if we start with those. So that is what we're gonna start with. And last piece. Okay. 
Now you can see we've done a whole chicken and we still have some of our coating left. So that's why we didn't want to put it all on the plate because it just kind of wastes it. Once you put some raw chicken in there, you don't want to use it for anything else. So we are going to let these sit here and soak up that coating real well. We're going to wash up our dishes and I'm going to show you how to deep fry it. But before we do that, we are going to start on our garlic mashed potatoes. So I'm going to move this out of the way and we are going to get started on that. Okay, now that our chicken is all cleaned up and out of the way, sitting here getting ready to be cooked, we're going to get together our garlic mashed potatoes. Need to get some potatoes. Let's see, we're going to feed four people, so seven or eight potatoes should be good. We need an onion. We're also going to use a nice shallot. And we've got some garlic over here already. So we've got this all ready. And what we're going to do next is our fun, fun garlic topping. Mm, let's see, we're probably going to put, that's good, five garlic cloves. We want to smash them on my new butcher's block that my husband got me for my birthday that I love. It's beautiful. What do you guys think? Let me know. Okay, we're going to chop it up. always smells delicious. You might think that's a lot of garlic, but these are garlic mashed potatoes. We want them to taste like garlic. Okay, we've got an onion. Cut it in half and peel it. Easiest way to do it is cut it in half first. And this again is a sweet yellow onion. We like those best. They have the best flavor. Now I will say when we cut up our potatoes, we are going to cook the potatoes with the onion. Okay, now we're gonna stop for a second. We're gonna wash our face because our eyes are watering from the onions like crazy. And we're gonna give our potatoes a quick wash too. Okay, our potatoes are washed. We're gonna grab the pot so that as we chop these guys, we'll be able to put them right into the pot. So we're gonna go ahead and put the onions in. We're gonna put half of the garlic in now. We've also got a shallot we're going to add too, but let's cut these potatoes up. They cook faster if you cut them smaller, you just don't want to mash them too much after you do that. So we're going to cut them kind of small because my family's hungry. They want to eat soon. And it also helps if you come home after work and you want to make this after work to cut these smaller so you're not eating at 9 o'clock. So. Okay, I went with seven potatoes. Might seem like a lot for four people. You've never met my family. One of my daughters eats more than most boys, especially when it comes to mashed potatoes. She loves them. And mashed potatoes go perfect with fried chicken. I mean, who could argue with that combination? Sounds great to me. Okay, we're gonna cut up a couple more. Then we're gonna put these on to boil before we start frying our chicken. That way, hopefully, everything's done about the same time. Now, I will say this butcher's block is amazing. I'm loving it. It's just the right height for me. It's solid. It's heavy. Now with all cutting boards and butcher's blocks, you want to make sure that you condition them or oil them on a regular basis. If you use it regularly, probably more often than they recommend. They recommend about every three to four months. I need to do it about once a month. OK, 
Okay, last potato. Then we're gonna get to our shallot. There we go. Shallots are kind of like a little red onion garlic cross. They have a little bit different flavor. Um, usually it's recommended if you're gonna do one eat medium onion in a recipe, you need to do three or four shallots, depending on their size. I just like to add this for more flavor. When uh, we're finished and these are all cooked, we're gonna leave the onions, the shallots, and the garlic in there. We're not gonna drain it all out. We're just gonna take out part of the, uh, part of the liquid. And that's something else you need to know about is the liquid that's gonna go in here. We are not gonna cook this in water. No way. We're gonna have a much better flavor much better texture, much better mashed potatoes when we're done by adding chicken broth. So I'm going to get that out. We're going to open this up and we're going to just cover our potatoes and onions and shallot and garlic that's in there. The reason we're going to just cover it is we just want it to cook just enough to get everything done and soak up all that flavor. Sometimes it's easier than it looks. Okay, I'm gonna pour this in here. Okay, they are just covered. I think you can probably see that. And that's all we want. We want them to just cover everything. We're not gonna put any salt in here, but we probably should put some pepper in here. Let's see if I have some peppercorns done. Nope, let's grind up some peppercorns. Just take a second. We've got some rough peppercorns to add in here. And we're gonna put this on the stove, let it start cooking. We want it to start to get to a boil and then we're gonna turn it down and cover it and then we will start on our fried chicken. So here we go. Okay, the potatoes are on the stove. We're gonna add one more vegetable to this because we need to have something to go besides the starch. So we're gonna grab some asparagus out of the refrigerator and I'm gonna show you how to do that in the microwave. So what we're gonna do is get it all ready, set it aside and have it uh, sitting here until we're ready to pop it in. So we're gonna get some asparagus, some butter, and some lemon. We're also gonna use a little bit of this garlic that we set aside the rest of the garlic will go into the mashed potatoes after they're all cooked. So, we want to chop off the bottom of these just because they're not always um, uniform, the bottoms kind of look yucky, so we want to make sure that they're going to fit in our dish and that everything about it's going to taste good. So we'll do a little bit more than that just so we can fit it in our dish. That's going to be perfect, so we're going to make them all this size. The top portion is a little more tender and tastes better anyway, so not a problem. Now I know asparagus can be a little bit expensive. It was on sale this week. Got it for 99 cents for the bush, the whole batch here. So that makes it a cheap side dish to add. I also only played, paid $3.50 for that entire chicken, which was a great deal. I told you before one of the things I do on my blog was I look for things that are on sale, things that are on clearance and things that are in the markdown section when I go to the store. I always do that because I wanna make sure I can get the best deal possible. That's what I did with the asparagus, that's what I did with the chicken, and that's what I did with the potatoes. So, works out great. We're gonna take a few slices of this butter, not very many, they're gonna be kinda of thin. We'll leave it in the wrapper, that way we can wrap it up and put it back in the fridge. We're gonna place it right on top of our asparagus. Okay, wrap it back up. We're gonna take, we've still got a big piece right here of the garlic and a big piece right here. So we'll take those, smash them again, and we'll chop it again too. Okay. We're gonna take that and add that to our asparagus. Kind of sprinkle it over so it goes over every little piece. 
The other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add just a little bit of the leftover chicken stock that we had so that it uh, makes sure that they're all nice and tender and juicy. And the last thing we're gonna do, a little bit of lemon zest on there. I know it, uh, not everybody likes lemon on everything, but all this does when you put a little bit of the zest on it is add some flavor and makes it taste better. This smells so good. This lemon is fresh, just picked. Okay, ends up with just a little bit. I mm, think we'll get a little bit more out of here. Okay, that looks perfect. See how that beautiful zest? Mm, delicious. Now we will go ahead and put a little bit of salt on there. A little bit of sea salt, just a touch. And you know how I like these little dried garlic slices. I just think they're fabulous. Now it's all ready, we're gonna set it aside. When everything's done, we're gonna pop it in the microwave for about three minutes just to make it all nice and tender and warm. We don't want it to be soggy, that's yucky. And that will be delicious, a nice little side dish for our meal, and we're all set. Okay, our potatoes are boiling, so we're gonna turn the heat down a little bit. Want it to kinda of be at medium high. Cover it, might have to just set it off to the side just slightly. Our oil is getting heated. Looks like it's just about ready. So what we're gonna do now is start with our chicken. I've got two pans going because I have room for this on my stove. That way I can get it all pretty much going at the same time. So we're gonna start by putting our thighs in, which are here and here. We're gonna put the skin side down. It's got a little bit of a sizzle going on right away when it goes in and we'll put our breasts in the other pan because that's our other two really big pieces. Okay, and we'll put the rest in. We'll go ahead and do all of our dark meat in one pan and all of our white meat in the other pan. Okay, now like with everything else we've talked about, when you cook it and you wanna get it nice and crispy, we don't wanna move it too much. So we wanna give it a minute to get a nice little crust on it and then we'll move it around just a bit. I need to wash my hands so I can keep going on this and we'll be right back. Okay, one thing we're gonna do is grab a second rack so that when it comes out, we can set it on here and it doesn't get soggy. Worst thing to do is set it straight on paper towels. If you do that, it's just gonna get all soggy and yucky and you're not gonna get that nice, crunchy, yummy, delicious fried chicken flavor and, and texture that you want. So they all seem to be just about bubbling right. I'm gonna grab some tongs here and give them just a little bit of a movement. We don't want them to get stuck. There we go. Wanna make sure the oil's underneath, but we definitely wanna make sure that they get that good, crispy, crunchy texture going on before we move anything completely over. Now we will probably flip these a couple of times just because we want to make sure it gets everywhere. These are looking great. We want to probably just adjust the heat a little bit as we go. We don't want it to get too hot because we don't want this, uh, this oil to burn or smoke. It'll give the chicken a terrible flavor. We want it to be perfect. It's looking good so far. If you start to hear it pop like that, just turn it down just a little bit. Because remember, you've got a lot of meat in there. So like I said, this is just about perfect. Four pieces in each pan. We've got about an uh, inch and a half of oil in each one so that we make sure everything gets covered about halfway when it goes in. And we're gonna just keep on going and moving it around and cooking it and flipping it until it's golden brown. Let's take another look. Okay. The wings are gonna be your first thing that get finished. So we're gonna keep a close eye on those. They're the smallest and have the least amount of meat on them. Right there, that's about perfect. Just start flipping these things over. It's starting to turn a little bit brown. We don't want the top to get too soggy before it's ready to go down again. Still bubbles when it goes in, so that means we did it just the right time. We're gonna do this other wing too. Now the rest of the pieces we're gonna leave for another minute or two before we do any kind of movement at all. Check on those potatoes. I got my spoon here. They're bubbling nicely. They look really good and they smell good too. I'm gonna give them a stir just to make sure that every single potato gets cooked evenly.
Now we're gonna put those potatoes together while our chicken rests after it's cooked. Let's give it a check. Oh, that looks just about perfect again. Look at that. This is looking absolutely delicious. One way you can tell we're doing it right too, there's not a lot of the, the flour in the oil itself. The oil's still pretty clear. That means we're doing it just right. We're cooking it long enough, we're not moving it around too much, and it's not turning into a gravy. It's staying the nice hot oil that we need it to be so it'll cook really good. Oh, that is a perfect chicken breast right there. There we go. Now the other reason that we don't want to have it cook too fast, these are some pretty big pieces of chicken. We want to make sure it's cooked through all the way before we take it out of this oil. The other thing you can do to make sure it's cooked all the way is as you cook it, you can put a few pieces in the oven to keep it crispy, but make sure you do it on a rack. Just like we're talking about putting it on the rack over here, we want to put it on a, on a cookie tray or a baking sheet that comes with a rack so it's not sitting in its oils. You want it to be able to drain just a little bit. It's the best way to do it. You get the best flavor, best texture, best everything. So we're gonna keep cooking these. I'm gonna check the wings again. They're looking just perfect. Remember, after we flip it, we wanna move everything around again after they've been there for a minute, just to make sure it doesn't stick. That's perfect. And make sure the oil's underneath all of it. This is gonna be the best buttermilk chicken you've ever had, I promise. Follow these recipes, follow the instructions, and it's gonna be perfect. Again, I wish we had Smell-O-Vision for you guys because the textures and smells that were coming out of this thing, they're making me hungry, and I guarantee somebody's gonna be pounding on my door soon to eat this. It's probably those guys over at uh, the Fat Man and Little Boy Show. They were expecting to get some of this, but we were running a little behind today, so sorry guys, maybe next time. Keep these things moving. We're gonna check the potatoes just to see how they're doing on their tenderness. You want them to be cooked just so that you can put a knife or a fork through them. You don't want them to get overcooked and get mushy before we even get them out of there. So let's give them a, a test. We'll use a knife. Looks like they are just about ready, which is perfect. So what we're gonna do is turn the heat off on these things. We're gonna let them sit there and soak up some of those juices and soak up more of that flavor while we finish cooking these. As soon as they're done, then we'll go ahead and get to work on our potatoes. All right, our little wings are just about finished. They look great. They've been cooking for a long, quite, a, quite a bit of time. You can see they're all crispy all over. We're gonna let them sit. And let's take a look. Looks like this thigh is done. It's a little smaller than the other one, so I don't, I'm not perfect when I cut a chicken. You don't have to be either. I'll give this one a flip, let it stay for another minute. And flip our chicken breast. Our chicken breasts are actually huge, so they're probably gonna take a few minutes longer than our thighs do, which is a little unusual but it's just because they're so big. I didn't cut them in half, I didn't split them, I didn't butterfly them. We just made, took the whole big chicken breast and stuck it in there. So let's see, our legs are looking beautiful. Take those out. And I think we're good on our thigh right here too. So what I'm gonna do, so I'm actually gonna put a chicken breast in each pan so it has a little bit more heat on its own to keep cooking. All right, those probably need about two to three more minutes, that's it. Then we're gonna take them out and start on our mashed potatoes. Okay, now that our chicken is cooked, we've got it sitting aside, getting all yummy. 
our mashed potatoes are cooked. Well, our potatoes are cooked. We're gonna make them into mashed potatoes. Ho ho, see that steam? So it is time for our asparagus to go in the microwave. That's gonna cook for about three minutes. We're gonna check it to make sure it's all done while we do this. So first thing we're gonna do, we call these smashed garlic mashed potatoes because they're smashed. This is a meat tenderizer, I know. It's what I used to smash my potatoes with. Get them all smashed, and you noticed I left the skins on. I like them that way. I think they taste better that way. They look better that way. We've got all of our garlic, our onions, and our shallots still in here. We drained this off to have just a little tiny bit of liquid at the bottom, so we still have a little bit of that chicken broth in there to taste really yummy. Then we're gonna add some things to this after we get these all smashed. I usually leave them a little bit chunky, not too much, just little tiny chunks in there so you actually know you're eating potatoes. My family seems to like it that way, so I do it that way. If you don't wanna do it this way, you can definitely get out your blender and blend these up after you smash them. So, those are looking pretty good for right now. This is what it looks like. So you got pretty kind of a, like a mush of potatoes in there and we're gonna add some things to it. So let's move this out of the way for a second. We're going to slice up some butter to put in there. The more butter, the better. May not be great for you, but tastes good and that's what's important. Probably put about three tablespoons of butter in there. And we are also going to add in all those extra garlic, uh, little pieces of garlic that we chopped up and had in our cooking. These are garlic mashed potatoes, so we want them to be very garlicky. So all that little extra garlic we had chopped is sitting here and it's in there now. Okay. Now the potatoes are really hot, so they're gonna melt that butter no problem. So we're gonna start mixing it up. Butter's incorporating perfectly. It's kind of a thick pasty kind of looking thing right now because we're gonna also add some heavy cream in here. Before we do that, because we want this to incorporate and melt in there too, I don't have any fresh, uh, fresh uh, dill today. I have dried. So we're gonna add some dried dill in there. Depends on how much you like. I'm gonna sprinkle it until it's kind of covering all the potatoes and then we're gonna mix it in. So that's probably, oh gosh, about a tablespoon. I'll show you what it looks like in just a second. This adds some great flavor to potatoes, I gotta tell you. So see, that's how much I put in there. You put how much you want. If you don't want any, don't put any at all. But I'm gonna mix that up now. So especially since it's dried, I want it to have a minute to incorporate and get a little bit more, uh, a little bit wet again and just kind of mix in there even better. This is looking and smelling delicious already. Okay. Now we are going to add some heavy cream in here. I've got about a cup, we won't use it all. We're just gonna put a little bit in. We're gonna stir it and then we're gonna add some more if we need to. So far that's only about a quarter of a cup maybe. You want them to get creamy that's what the butter and the heavy whipping cream are for. Now, because we cooked these with chicken broth instead of just water, we're gonna wanna taste this before we add any salt to it because there's already salt in that chicken broth. We'll do that too, but let's see. Probably, I'm gonna add about a quarter cup more of the heavy whipping cream. And heavy whipping cream, not light. The light stuff just doesn't quite have what it needs in it to make them, make them creamy. That looks just about perfect. It's kind of sloshing a little bit, you can see. Just a little bit of slosh going on, but once it gets all mixed together, it's not gonna have that slosh going on anymore. Now one of the reasons that I'm mixing this all in the pan is it's hot. It keeps everything hot, makes everything mixed together a little better, and you can always put it into a pretty bowl later if you wanna serve it that way. Or if you're in a hurry, it's after work, just like making the chicken. You can serve it in this, you have less dishes to wash afterwards. All right, so last thing we're gonna add, my family loves cheese. We've got some Asiago cheese right here. 
You can buy it shredded, you can buy it whole. I like to buy it shredded, it's easier for me to use that way. We're just gonna sprinkle a little bit in, stir it up and then sprinkle just a little bit more in. I know they're garlic mashed potatoes, but you know me, I always gotta put extra in. Okay, let's give it just a little bit more. We probably really only put about a quarter of a cup altogether in there. Just enough for a little zip and flavor. Adds a little tang too. Now you can always put sour cream in here, you can add some chives, you can do anything extra you want to or leave anything out that you don't want. You could use margarine instead of butter. I prefer butter, I like the taste better. So we've got these things ready. Now what we're gonna do is give it a taste. Let me grab a spoon real quick. Okay, wanna make sure we don't need any extra seasonings, no salt, no pepper, anything. Those are delicious, I'm telling you, just like they are. I could eat this whole bowl. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna get our asparagus out of the microwave, we're gonna put our chicken, our potatoes onto a plate, and we're gonna serve this up with some bread. I have some great Parmesan sourdough bread to go with this, and this is going to make a wonderful meal. So hang on just a second, I'll plate it all up for you and show you what it looks like. So here we have it, our completed meal. We've got our buttermilk fried chicken, our garlic mashed potatoes, our asparagus. I added a little heirloom tomato with a little bit of sea salt on it to round out the meal, and some beautiful Parmesan sourdough bread. Let's taste those potatoes. Those are perfect, and the best part, this chicken. It's crispy, it's beautiful. This is my favorite piece, the wing, so I'm gonna take a little bite of it, and then I'll share with everybody else, I guess. Oh my gosh, it's crispy, it's juicy, it's tasty. All the flavors have come together perfectly. I'm telling you, you're gonna love this meal. I wanna tell you again, thanks for hanging with Wow Mom today on Wow Mom Cooking. We'll see you next time.